Yeah, I tend to like uh, the cultural and biological control of insects more than the chemical controls. And the uh, in publication 64, they mention the use of uh, Bacillus thuringiensis, and the short form for that is Bt. It's commonly known as Bt. And this is a bacteria which attacks the digestive system of the caterpillar, and it's been used on many different larval stages of moths and butterflies, such as the jack pine budworm, tomato hornworm, and the cabbage uh, moth. So if you contact the Ministry of Agriculture and Food, they may be able to tell you where to get the Bacillus thuringiensis, which is mm -hmm. a nice biological control, which may be more effective than just hand-picking or... Yes hoping that the robins will eat yeah. them all up. It, it would get more, uh, gr it would reach greater numbers mm -hmm. in the long run, wouldn't it? And you have a hotline, uh, toll-free line that you've also used for some of your uh, pest problems. Yes, in the, in the front of uh, publication 64, there is a number, a 1-800 number, the National Pesticide Hotline. It's, it's right here, and it's a very in informative uh, hotline that you can call free of charge to ask questions on the use of any chemicals or pesticides so that you're sure that you're using the proper chemical applying it at the proper time of year and uh, so that you're not putting chemicals into the environment unnecessarily. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, just to make it a little easier so you don't have to memorize the numbers now, we're going to have it on the screen at the end of the program, and it would be a good idea to jot it down and use it for future reference when uh, these problems occur, because often when you have a, a, a problem situation, you want answers really, really quick. You don't want to have to take the time to start researching at that stage. So uh, just to sum up then now, um, gather your cocoons and um, uh, do what you can to prevent the uh, adult from, from laying eggs and watch for the egg masses during the fall, winter and early spring and uh, try your controls then once they emerge and um, start chewing away in, at our poplar salads right. or, or apples, whatever it, it may be. And see if the fish will go for them. That's another good idea, if we can get enough fish. <laughs> They're pretty soft-bodied, but if you can get it out there, maybe uh, the fish would go for it. That would be an idea. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with you in a moment. him over for a drink he wouldn't leave then he said he knew what I really wanted because we're married he said I have to then he told me how much it all cost he said I had to make it worth his while we were friends I guess he thought I wouldn't tell anyone I need that job sexual now assault is any unwanted act of a it. sexual nature <laughs> sexual assault it's a crime at the time of our taping, we're into a total water ban, which means that no one is allowed to, to uh, use extra water outside for washing cars, watering lawns, vegetable gardens, whatever. Uh, from the indications that we have, this is going to continue for the better part of the summer, and really we should be prepared to use water wisely, no matter what the circumstances. Even if we do have a, a, a rainy summer, if we can use some good techniques, to condition our vegetables and, and lawns, then we're not so totally dependent on um, what the weatherman dictates for us. Uh, Lance, what would be a good sort of basic tip for, for taking care of um, water use, wise water use? There's a, there's a couple of areas that we should cover. Um, that would involve actual watering um, mowing the grass and fertilizing and uh, the time to do all these things. Uh, starting from the beginning of the year, uh, your first, the first thing you should do is apply a fertilizer early in the spring. Uh, Before the grass starts to grow? Right. Mm -hmm. Get it down right away. And, get, and people should try to get away from the high nitrogen, high nitrogen content, they're looking for green grass and lots of lush growth. Instead, uh, concentrate on a high middle number, the phosphorus. 
and to encourage root growth. If you get healthy roots, the, the greenness, the, the lush growth will come later. But they, they need the healthy, strong root growth. So let's look for higher middle numbers, what you'll find in the, on, on your fertilizer bags. Get away from the 21, 2, 2 and stuff like this. Okay, so and that, get more that, into the higher middle numbers. Yeah. So it's not necessarily going to be something that shows up immediately as, as a nicer looking lawn than your neighbors, but it's going to make your, your it, grass healthier. In the long run, yes, it'll be much better for it. And in your first cut, so you fertilize, and your first cut shouldn't be made too early. The grass should be let to grow a little while in the spring to at least three inches, say somewhere between three, three and a half inches before the first cut. This is so that the roots can get established. If you have no, uh, if you make your cut early in the spring and you make it nice and you make it low, it may look good for a while, but it'll suffer later. To encourage the strong root growth, let the top grow a little bit so it can nourish the roots, send it down nutrients and energy. Okay, and then you change your, your cutting height as the summer progresses? Um, your first cut should be fairly high. Say uh, lawnmower at the high setting, two inches at least. Uh, let the grass go to about three inches. After that, in the cooler months, the, um, the early spring, the late fall, the, uh, the cutting height can be one and a half inches, but generally for the better part of the year, keep it at two inches. Okay, so the, once we've got it um, fertilized and cut. And our first cut. Then we talk about watering. Our first water should not come until the first uh, sign of drought. That's a little tricky. How can we tell that our lawn is, is needing a drink? Well, your grass will turn darker and uh, you'll leave, your foot will leave an impression when you step on it that, that will stay down for a while. Um, so let it, water it at first sign of drought, but uh, water it thoroughly, not just a light sprinkle. You want the water to go right down to the bottom of the roots. Okay, so it's not a good idea to just wave the wand. <laughs> Lance is being att attacked by <laughs> killer flies. It's not a good idea then to just wave the wand across your, your entire lawn for 15 minutes no, at the end of the day. No, you spoil the grass that way. Uh, you want your lawn to grow well, at this stage of the game, you're going to want it lean and mean. You want the roots healthy um, and uh, that it doesn't really need all that much water. If you water it thoroughly once a week, it's better than, water, than every second day uh, with a light sprinkling. If you're watering too often and not deeply enough, the roots are just going to be hanging around the top of the surface because they're, they're spoiled. They don't, have, they don't have to go searching around for water. But if you let them search out for water, the roots will go down, they'll be healthier, there, there'll be more roots. Um, so you don't just tease it with light sprinklings mm -hmm. and, and every second day. And if you sort of condition it to fend for itself, then it's not going to be collapsing at the first, oh, right. uh, first few dry days that we have. It'll be a lot stronger. The root system will be able to support it and hold on to the water in the ground better. It's storage, so you have more roots. And you don't have them up around the surface drying out. Uh, this uh, odd and even days has got people confused, I think, because they figure, they think that if it's, if it's their day to water, that they're going to get out there and water no matter what. So if you're on odd days or even days, if it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're going to be out there watering and say, I'm going to get my fair share of water. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to water. But uh, people don't realize that it doesn't need that much and that you're spoiling it that way. It should be around once a week and thoroughly. So just obviously, you just water when, it, when you're... When, needing it when it's with, needed. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. okay. What about timing, Lance? Does it make a difference? It certainly does. In the heat of the day, the, if you say you water in the midday heat, it's just going to hit the hit the ground, hit the grass, and evaporate really quickly. Um, I, the city has imposed uh, strict watering times in the morning and in the evening. Uh, the morning's preferable, so that the water doesn't stay on the foliage all evening. If say if you water at night, the water may stay on the foliage all evening and disease symptoms may set in. Uh, water in the, in the morning, early, and that way the foliage dries off, but the ground stays wet underneath. So get up really early and, and start watering before the sun gets hot. Right, avoid watering in the mm -hmm. heat of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay, besides lawns, of course, other parts of our garden are going to need watering, and there are some nifty little um, hints that you can use to 
get the most out of the water that we have available to us. It doesn't necessarily have to come straight out of the garden hose. Laura, your grandmother has accumulated quite a few of these little tips along the way. Can you share some with us? Yes, uh, my grandmother often uses her dish water or bath water to come out and water her various flowers and vegetables as uh, if you have a garden at home, you know how difficult it is to watch your poor little plants wilting in the sun. So she comes out here. It's a bit of a manual labor to come out and pour the water on, but it is water that can and, and should be used in times of uh, water shortage. We also have a an interesting rain uh, collection device at the end of the garage where we store gallons and gallons of rainwater which can be uh, put into the watering can and used at any time of day or night as it's just free water and uh, I think that that would be one recommendation that I would make for anybody with a vegetable garden as uh, for a good crop of vegetables you really do need a lot of watering. It's actually better probably for your vegetables than the well, ordinary hose water yeah. because it would be room temperature or air temperature and um, natural water that yeah. uh, has just uh, come down with the rain. I think that's what, the reason that she originally worked up this rain collection mm -hmm. device because she likes to use the soft water on her plants, uh, it being an organic uh, vegetable garden. One of the other tips that my grandmother has taught me is at planting time, uh, when you're planting your vegetables, be they plants or seeds, to put the water right where the roots or the seed is going to be, uh, rather than watering the whole garden. That way you're, you're watering your soil, which is later going to compact, and, and especially if it's a clay soil like we have here. Uh, you're also watering the weeds in between the rows unnecessarily. So what we do is we dig a rather large hole, set our plant in, pour the water in, and you, you must wait for the water to drain down into the soil uh, because if you don't, you could leave air pockets when filling in with soil. And this way, you're, uh, it's the same as the deep watering that Lance was talking about. You're encouraging the roots to go down into the soil. When you water just a little bit at the top, uh, you're just encouraging shallow yeah. and growth. And most of it tends to just roll off the surface anyway when you right. do it that way. And again, watering those weeds that uh, we're trying to control. Uh, with the, the seeds, we, we water the trench, put the seeds in, and then bury it with dry soil, which prevents the soil from baking hard uh, on the surface and allows the seedlings to push up out of the uh, soil. Mm -hmm. That's a really good technique. Much uh, more easily. You can, there's also uh, the use of mulches in the garden, be they uh, organic mulches such as straw, manure, leaves, which, ho which help to retain the moisture in the soil. Or some people have actually used plastic sheets in their garden and they cut a little cross into the plastic and fold back the corners and put their plants in the different holes. And this keeps your vegetables clean, keeps the weeds down, and it also uh, helps to heat the soil up really early in the spring for those harder to germinate seeds such as cucumbers and melons and zucchini and squash. Gives you a little edge on the uh, planting season. Of course, at the same time, it's, it's retaining that valuable moisture underneath the surface so that the roots are not drying out. Um, you can use ground covers as well. Uh, lawns are notoriously heavy water users. If you want it to look optimum at all times, you really have to give it a regular watering regime. But there are alternatives that you can use as um, surface covers. And um, can you, would you be able to give us a couple of suggestions just to uh, wet the appetite mm -hmm. a bit, Laurie? Well, I'm trying to encourage the use of ground covers more in Sudbury, especially on uh, slopes around trees and shrubs at the edge of the property where, where mowing is becoming a, a maintenance problem. And we can incorporate plant materials and, and nice curving lines which lead the eye to areas of accent that we're trying to uh, call attention to in our garden. And just, just have the lawn where you actually need lawn area, not under trees where it's becoming a maintenance problem. There are various uh, ground covers on the market, uh, periwinkle, goutweed being one that you would use in a, an area of poorer soil. Uh, there are uh, stone crops and echeveria, the hens and chickens, which I think a lot of people are familiar with, mm -hmm. which will grow on very dry soil. And Even ideas slopes. like lily of the valley and in certain areas sure. or, or hosta around trees. Perennial um, flowers uh, as yeah. a cover. Shrubs, low uh, growing junipers and things mm -hmm. instead of this lawn obsession that we all seem to have. One of the bonuses is, is that most of the ground covers will bloom at some time during the, the growing season, so you get a bit of variety. Mm -hmm. It's not just, lawns are gorgeous when they're velvet green, but when they're less than perfect, they aren't that attractive, and it would be nice to have the extra um, 
variety. Any of these um, problem areas or suggestions, recommendations can come from the Master Gardeners and the Master Gardener hotline will be shown on the screen at the end of the program. Feel free to call uh, the Master Gardening Group if you have any problems, whether they be with caterpillars, lawn care, water conservation, ground cover, whatever. We're here to serve your uh, gardening needs. So we, we hope that you'll join us again in a couple of weeks when we have another interesting episode for you in regards to home, home gardening in the north.